in the Congo Basin, particularly in, in Gabon, um, the way we do forestry is sustainable and, and, and it's quite different to the way people imagine forestry elsewhere in the world. In the Congo Basin, the way we do logging is selective logging. So, so on average, we cut only one or two trees per hectare. So in a hectare of rainforest in Gabon, you have five, six hundred trees. We're only going to take one or two of those trees out, the, the, the biggest, straightest, most, most valuable ones. And so we're leaving the forest ecosystem intact. And, and we're leaving the forest's natural processes to, to regenerate the forest. And so we don't have to replant the trees. We, we, we have that functioning ecosystem. The elephants are still there, the gorillas are still there, and, and many of the, the, the tree species that we're harvesting are species whose fruit are eaten by, by wildlife, and it's the wildlife that actually plants the seeds. Um, and, so, and so by leaving the ecosystem intact and functioning, um, we, we, we ensure that the, the future generations of trees are still being planted. These forests, when the logging was happening, were not bringing any value addition to the country. So the country was exporting round logs, and that was happening for the last 60 years. So there was no economic value addition in the country. So the economic zone was born with an idea, how do you actually transform the timber locally add value add locally, which ensures two things. The country is able to benefit the resources. Secondly, it creates jobs. Thirdly, create a platform where industrials will come and transform and make money. So the economic zone was created keeping all these three stakeholders, the prospective transforming companies, the government, and the society at large. NCOC SEZ is the result of a vision, the vision of His Excellency, Mr. President Ali Bongo Ndimba, who decided in 2009 to ban the exports of raw logs. Instead of, he preferred to invest in local transformation of wood, particularly. So first, second, and third transformation. And the SEZ to be created as a joint venture between the uh, Republic of Gabon and the international uh, business Olam who created a joint venture named GSEZ, Gabon Special Economic Zone. We are in a vast land of 100,000 uh, hectares, and we've got roughly 72 uh, businesses under production and 20 uh, under construction also. In order for the transformed wood to get exported, there is definitely a requirement for specialized infrastructure to be created. GSES has taken upon itself to build such an infrastructure by building a huge port, by building up structures like this, uh, warehouses, specialized equipments, to assist all the big industries who are setting up their transformational plants in uh, the country. Uh, Greenply being one of the biggest ones and being uh, uh, our biggest partner in doing so. The industry, uh, they have been exporting approximately over a million tons already and this industry is expected to grow exponentially in the coming few years and as G says we are committed to provide such infrastructure and uh, seamless services. Greenplay's journey in Africa started way back in 2012. The chairman had come down to Gabon to try to work out the possibilities of working from here. In mid-2016 it was decided that we would open up our factory in Gabon and in this regard, they needed someone to handle the portfolio of starting off the factory and taking this forward. It has to be a challenging task, and I agreed to move into Gabon. So within seven, eight months, we had the factory up and running, and by 2017, we had the production started. The challenges which we faced during that time is the development at the Encoc area was not as you see it today and subsequent to us coming in, a lot of other Indian manufacturers decided to follow in because Greenply being the leader, everyone took, a, took a, the cue that this would be the upcoming market. Greenply plan in Gabon is a long-term commitment to this place. We have planned backward and forward integration. To specifically discuss the backward integration, we have gone into forestry. 
I'm Charles Madibe, and I work for Greenplay. It's a no-no for me. So I'm in charge of forest operations. When I was joining, it was like, okay, maybe this is another new company. They're just coming to get some logs in Gabon and they will uh, run away. But I felt something and I had a good feeling with my boss in Janil Ban. So I got confident with him. And from that moment, I told you that I was an assistant. Assist, assistant means driver, means up to, to... And from that position, he took me to a higher position. Now I'm in charge of forest operations. It means when you go outside and you ask for green ply, talking about supplying material, they will tell you, we know Charles Madibe who works for green ply. I think a lot of things have changed and I'm now in the staff of green ply. We grew up together and it is our slogan also, let's grow together. What we want to highlight here is that we are doing sustainable forest management. It is not that we just cut a tree and that's the end of it and that wipes out. We are eroding, the impacting the environment adversely. It is the fact is that with sustainable forest management, we are helping to replace other products, other substitutes which are there, which are not so eco-friendly. So when we set out to develop the Gabon Special Economic Zone, we were looking for partners who are reliable. We are looking for partners who are committed to sustainability. We are looking for partners who will honor their commitment. And when you look at you know, large players globally, you have very few players who can honor that. And one of them was Greenply. So Greenply was that partner that we wanted to come. And we went around them, we discussed with them, and we were able to convince them to come and invest. I think they're a very good example of what a company can do sustainably in a country. So today, Greenply for us is a reference of how a model company should be in the economic zone. I think we'd be very proud to have Greenply because they fulfill all the criteria of sustainability towards the environment, sustainability towards the sector, towards employee, and more importantly, they have been pushing the transformation envelope. So they started with one setup, now they've expanded their setup. It has been an entire transformation journey. So a good example will be Orphanage, which is supported by Greenply and Gabon Special Economic Zone. There are over 120 children, which we take care of their fooding, their infrastructure. Another good example is women, women empowerment. So currently we are doing a program where by 50 women are being trained in non-traditional women jobs. Heavy truck driving, machine driving. So sustainability from a community perspective is very hard to what we do. And very proud that companies like Greenply participate actively not for the lip service, but genuinely. Je, je suis Mademoiselle Abou Arlette France. Je suis Gabonais. Je suis son mère de deux enfants, la fille, une fille et un garçon, la fille a 9 ans, le garçon a 2 ans. Bon, avant d'arriver à, à Green Play, j'ai eu à servir dans un restaurant. Du coup, euh, à un moment, j'ai perdu le travail du restaurant. Je suis allée ouvrir un petit bar. J'ai géré le bar, j'ai mal géré, le bar est tombé. Bon, je me suis retrouvée dans la galère. Il y avait mes enfants, j'étais le père, j'étais la mère. Il fallait payer l'école des enfants. Je ne m'en sortais plus, je ne pouvais plus. Du coup, j'ai donné les enfants aux parents, à mon père et à ma mère. Je leur ai donné les enfants parce que je ne pouvais même plus prendre soin d'eux. J'étais même incapable de prendre soin de moi-même. Du coup, C'est comme ça 
que je suis venu au LAM. Je suis venu au LAM. J'ai cherché le travail, j'ai tourné. Je me suis retrouvée dans Greenplay. Et vraiment, depuis que je suis dans Greenplay, je suis tranquille. J'arrive à prendre soin de mes enfants, payer leur école, résoudre leurs petits soucis et tout le reste. Et moi-même, j'arrive à prendre soin de moi. J'ai pu, grâce à Greenplay, j'ai pu faire, refaire mes papiers que j'avais perdus. J'ai pu refaire mes papiers. Du coup, euh, avec Greenplay, je m'en sors. Je suis tranquille maintenant. Tout se passe bien. Le travail, ce n'est pas vraiment fatigant. Je travaille, je rentre, j'arrive à m'occuper aussi de ma maison et tout le reste. Donc, à présent, ça va, grâce à Greenplay. Here in Gabon, with the help of other like-minded people, we are trying to create a brand, the brand called Okume. Alors, l'Okume est, est spécial parce que d'abord, c'est un bois qui n'est qui pas dur, qui est tendre, donc très facile pour le déroulage. Euh, on, peut, on peut les tuver, donc ça le rend encore plus, euh, plus souple, on va dire ça comme ça. Et, euh, et par rapport à, à une essence euh, de, de, de bois d'hiver euh, où on peut dérouler aussi, c'est une essence qui est très 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 souple pour le, pour le déroulage. Tree that takes about 40 years to grow, it sells at less than 650-700 euros a cubic meter as a finished product. We believe that the future is going to be very different. And for that, we are working with companies like Greenply. How do we create a brand out of it? Such that the customers are able to clearly see what is the difference between a Okume versus other species clearly able to see what is the benefit of using it, not just the value of the timber, not just the properties of timber, but also benefit to the environment at large. My belief is in three to four years, Okume will be very differently priced when compared to today. And it's a journey of creating a brand. We hope in the next three to four years, you yourself will be coming and looking for Okume, saying that where can I buy Okume? Libreville, um, in French, means free town. It was a town that was created by the liberation of, of slaves uh, many, many years ago. It's quite a cosmopolitan town. I've brought my kids up in Libreville. We're, we're, we're on the beach. It's, it's, it's a safe city. It's, it's, a, it's a city with, with great restaurants. It's a city with great beaches. It's a city Um, that is surrounded by national parks. When I decided to take up the assignment in Gabon, that's Africa, there were a lot of mixed reaction among my friends, my family members. Africa, why Africa? But a lot of adverse stories started coming to mind. After having moved to Africa, Once I came here, I started realizing that the perception we have carry about this place is, is totally so, so far from the truth. This place, like any place, is as good as it can get. In fact, uh, my standard of life in terms of the environment, in the pollution-free environment, so much more better. Gradually, with Gabon developing economically and financially, a lot of different expatriates have started coming in. Initially, my plan was that I would go back to India every three months. Now it's been, at times, it's eight months, seven months, and I have no intention to go back to India in any way because I don't miss anything. In fact, when I am in India, I feel I miss Gabon. With the advent of uh, the transformation industry of wood, there naturally are supporting industries around it which get built up. For example, for the production of plywood, the, there is a requirement of glue. So therefore, a glue industry will come up. Each of the wood requires to be, each of the transformed wood requires to be packed. So therefore, a packaging industry will come up. And all this leads to a lot of um, uh, employment generation and the growth of the country on the whole. What we have created is a single window concept 
where you have 27 government departments sitting under one window. Right from company creation to your work permits, to your driving license, to environmental approvals, construction permits, you get under one window. So this soft infrastructure enables industry to move very fast, enables them to establish very fast. So those investors who have yet not come to Gabon, I will say to them they're missing a big opportunity to double their money in three, four years. So my sincere advice to people who are looking to invest in Gabon, Gabon is a safe place to do business, economically, politically stable, rule of law. My single advice would be take a plane and we are here to receive you to help you establish your business.